Did I miss a step? Yeah. Jamie. Jamie, are you here? I didn't think I saw her. Okay, Jamie Holda. She's our Saturday night coordinator. All right, then the other people filling out the rest of our children's ministry leadership team is our volunteers. And Anne, where are you? Oh, Anne uh, Ramsey. There she is, Anne Ramsey, who is, I believe, probably the longest member, longest time-wise, um, on the team. Been there since I started the team. And she used to be a coordinator for the four, Fours, Fives, and Ks, and when she gave that up, I wouldn't let her go. So I made her a member at large and um, really value everything Anne brings to the team. Then we have our Welcome Center coordinators, um, Mary Funkhauser. Mary, are you here? There she is. She does upstairs at West, and then downstairs, Angie. I don't know if Angie was able to come tonight. Angie Bateman. Um, Let's see, is Joyce here? Joyce Bird? Okay, she does our resource rooms that keeps them well stocked at both campuses. Um, don't tell me, don't tell me. Um, ah, thank you. Our masterpiece coordinators, Michelle Demaray in the back, and Andrea Custer, she is not here. Is that everybody? Did I get everybody? Did I miss anybody? Who? Alicia. 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 I don't think Alicia's here either. She's in charge of our um, special events, the big one being um, the Easter extravaganza. So she does that. We meet as a team um, monthly um, just to plan everything and keep in communication. And it's a wonderful, wonderful team. So that's our team. Um, a little bit of business. If you have not completed registration forms for your family, Please make sure you do so you are not standing in line on Sunday when you're supposed to be in the classroom. Please, please, please get that done. Um, there are some people who still have not completed their screening, and we, at some point, may, will maybe have a list up there. Oh, you think it's coming? Oh, there it is. Okay, so there are the adults who we need some kind of screening from. And Jill is in at that kiosk in the back, and she's got all the different forms you need. So if you see your name up here, um, you can um, go see her. Um, then if I would, I would like to ask all of you to pray for our staffing needs. We are about 70% um, staffed, 72% staffed overall. We have some major holes in places so that we cannot open as of right now. If you would just pray or spread the word, um, we need a lot of preschool teachers and helpers. That seems to be one of our biggest needs as well as um, Saturday night and here at the East Campus. So there's lots of different things to do. So if you would pray for that, that God would bring those people forward and we could have a, a full staff ready to go on September 6th and 7th, which is a week from this weekend. Oh my goodness. We walked around both buildings and I, I, I don't know how it's going to be ready, but they say it is. So I'll believe, I'll believe them, I guess. Can we go back, Kathy, to the mission and the values? We've changed this a little bit this year. Um, here's the FBCG mission in case you... Um, have not heard that recently. Our mission at First Baptist Church of Geneva is to honor God by making more disciples for Jesus Christ. We will seek to accomplish this mission by, you'll see the four words, reaching the people and families of our local community, connecting them to each other and to the church, and equipping them through a process of, thank you, international? I think that word, like, intentional, that's what that word's supposed to be, spiritual growth to serve the world in the name of Christ. So that's the church's mission. Our mission um, for children's ministry is, how many? There it is. Love children to Jesus. We use that short little phrase a lot because it's just easy to say and easy to remember. By helping kids, and this next phrasing comes from our true curriculum. We wanted to be just real up to date with our stuff. By helping kids and their fa families connect with God, find their place in his big story, and respond to him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our values, um, these are our five values that we have come up. We believe in the supreme authority of scripture. Our value is development of relationships between 
children and other children, children and adults, and adults with adults. Um, safety of our children is a, is a huge thing, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Having a child-friendly environment and then a standard of excellence in all that we do. So that's our, um, our values. Okay, I can't see my sheet now. Can we, can we turn on these, um, these lights? The, the hanging down ones. I don't know what they're called. The hanging down ones. Okay, that's good. Can you still see the screen all right? Oh yeah, that's good. Is, can you see it all right? It's good? All right, good. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, prizes. You know what, ladies, we've been talking about what should we give prizes for tonight. Next year, I think we should give prizes for anybody sitting in the front row. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Okay, so I have some gift cards here, and I'm going to spread them out on this, this little stage. And you can come up and select your gift cards to, their, to lots of different things. And we decided we were going to have um, the first two people who RSVP'd to coming to this training to be able to have one. And those two people are Sandy Plinsky and Barb Digestes. So ladies, come up and get your gift card. Gift card. Come on, Sandy. There's um, DQ and Baskin Robbins and Steak and Shake and Subway and Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's and a Barnes and Noble. So take your bad. I would have guessed that for you. Yeah. Okay. Then um, our first two arrivals. I, I, did somebody keep track of? <gasps> Katie's not here. Do you have um, Becky? Where's Becky? <laughs> Wasn't my husband here before any of them? Yeah, Danny. <laughs> Danny Saris. No. Yeah. You're not going to get one? I don't think you should be eliminated no. because you're married to me. He's deferring. I mean, He's deferring. you put up with a whole lot of stuff. Right, Danny, you don't want one? Deferring. No. Who's the next one? Christy Jennings. Christy, are you here? There she is. Come get one. And then we, um, if, we, if it's your very first time serving, by the way, if it is your first time serving, would you stand up? You've never served in children's ministries here before. Wow. Okay, good. good. Um, these are the people who put their names in here, so I'll draw one out and two, I'm going to drop two. And you can um, come get your prize. Scott McLeod. Serving in, where are you serving? The fours. Yes, with Nicole. All right, I can see these names, so I need to just do it blindly. And Peg Bendowski. Peg? Where are you, Peg? There you are. Awesome, and Peg has agreed to be a substitute in preschool and elementary. I met you at the kiosk. Yeah, so go help yourself to a card. Um, and she is a school teacher. Or are you retired? I'm retired. She's retired. But once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher. At least that's what I find out. Okay, I, I can't sit up there. I'm sorry. I gotta be down here. Um, you all can see me, right? I want to talk about um, safety because I I want to explain about our security. We went to a. Um, was that two days or two weeks? It felt like two weeks <laughs> of a, a training where you sit and listen to people tell you everything you ever want to know and then some about safety. Um, it was it was good. There was it just was a lot of information. So anyway, I won't, we're not going to take two days to do this. I'm going to just give you a few highlights. So first, I want to give you some statistics just to keep you aware. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's yeah. Is that good? Which we're, we're videotaping. I'm sorry, I'm a mover. So is Byron, you're in trouble. Is that good? Do you want me to go back and sit down? No, you're fine. I'm good? Just stay in this line? Hello, people watching this in your home or someplace? Okay. Um, all right, here are some statistics. An estimate 7.9% of men and 19% of women globally expect, experience sexual abuse prior to the age of 18. That's a lot of people. 
In America, one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually molested to some degree prior to age 18. An average of 117 youngsters will be molested before criminal prosecution. In other words, what this is saying is kids don't talk about it readily, and we often don't hear about it till years and years later when it's affecting their lives. Um, the incidence rate of child abuse and neglect in this country is about 10 times as high as the incident rate for all forms of cancer. Isn't that staggering? Abusers are adult, male, are adult males 90% of the time and relate better to children than to adults. This is the one that really gets me. Strangers account for only 10% of all abuse cases, while acquaintances 90%. Children usually know their abuser. So I want to touch again on what we do in children's ministry and the student ministries too, as far as protecting children and, and protecting you against a false accusation. Uh, first of all, we screen everybody. I think you all know that by now. We do the criminal background check. We do your reference checks. Um, I read each and every one of them thoroughly. And I'll tell you, reading those Faith statements are so cool. That's my favorite part. It's, it's, I love what you all share. Um, this year, in the past, we have said, okay, they don't have it all done yet, but they're in a room with someone who has, so we're going to let it be okay, and we're not doing that anymore. So if you are not completely screened, when we start our programming, you will not be allowed to serve, and we will contact you and let you know. So please, if you haven't done everything or if you're not sure, um, go see Jill. She's got the list back there. Then we want um, we want an awareness of because you think the, the, the safety instruction that we went to was was from a camp, and their conditions are a lot different. You know, opportunities for counselors to be in the cabin with the kids alone and just when they're anywhere on the campgrounds, it's a little. Um, you need to be a little bit more cautious. We don't have that here, but we do have some things, and I want us to all to be aware, and I'm going to ask you if, you're, if you are a parent, at your time, whatever you think is good, to let your child know this. Um, but first of all, um, and actually I got, I, Bruce and I had a great talk today, and we were, we were talking about this, and um, he did a little test thing with his son, Joel, which Bruce always uses his kids for test things. I don't know if you know that, but I, I do. Um, and now you do. Um, but anyway, he asked Joel, um, if you were in the bathroom and an adult came in, would it bother you? No, no. What if a, an adult was in the bathroom and you were in there and he kind of like looked over the stall? And he says, well, that would be weird. And, and I'm adding the word a little creepy. Um, and Bruce said, yeah, that, that would be weird. But what happens is a child might think that's weird, but go no further with it. And we need to encourage our children any time they feel uncomfortable about something that is a little bit questionable or shady, they need to tell somebody. That's the big thing. Be aware and tell somebody. Um, and then he also asked him, okay, what if, what if he asked if this adult came in the bathroom and asked you if you needed any help? Well, that would be even weirder. Yes, it would. And what if he tried to come in the stall with you? Well, then, you know, then it's time to run. But, um, so just tell your kids to be aware of things that adults can do. And, and it will say, and this is the way uh, a sexual molester operates. It starts very innocently. Hi, how are you? How's your day going? You're just talking to him in the bathroom. And hey, you need any help? That sounds, that can sound very innocent and helpful. But as soon as the child hears that, I think they need to, you need to let them know that's the time to talk. That's the time to tell us. So, according to our bathroom procedures, if you're a preschool teacher, there are bathrooms right in the classroom. And our guideline is if the child is old enough and doesn't need any help, then they just go to themselves. If they're little and they need help, keep the door ajar. Don't close the door. Never be in the bathroom alone with a child where no one can see you. Never, ever, ever. Because um, even if nothing happens, you could be accused. So don't do that. Elementary, um, 
we have security. My husband is the security guy at West and sits out in the hall and besides looking at his phone and playing games, um, he also, I'm sorry, I'm having it. He also watches the kids. That's his big job, is when a child goes to you and you're in kid's station, he says, I need to go to the bathroom. You don't need to go anywhere with him. You say, fine. He goes out, there's one door, and Becky will tell you the only door we're going to use, because things, things look different everywhere. And when they leave, um, Danny watches whatever bathroom they go to, makes sure, you know, they're not in there for a half an hour or whatever, and, and then we'll make sure he gets back to you. And if by chance the child is taking a long time, and this has happened, then he'll stand outside and call in, um, or if it's a um, women's, if it's a girl, one of us will do that, or, or kind of go in a little bit with somebody else so we're never alone. So anyway, you should never be in a bathroom alone with a child. That's kind of the bottom line. Uh, let's see if I need to talk about anything else there. Okay, now the other thing we want to talk about and along with this safety thing is the check-in and drop-off and pick-up procedure, which is not new, but we want to stress some things because we saw it getting a little lax this past year. Um, parents should be checking in their children. We have seen a lot of fourth graders come in and check them off for everybody and then try to get the kids there, and we do not want it to be that way. We used to have signs on all the kiosks. A parent should be the one do it, using the kiosk, signing their kids in, getting their kids to their classroom. Um, because then when you get to the classroom, that's not only your opportunity to meet your child's teacher, but you give them then um, the, the sticker that goes on the, on the clipboard. Um, so please make sure you escort your children to their different places. Um, when you pick them up, and, and we're changing this a little bit. Um, when kids are picked up, the parent has to show you the badge, their parent badge. There's two of them, and so it doesn't matter how many children they get, there's only two parent badges, one for the mom, one for the dad. So when a parent comes to you to pick up their child, you need to see that badge. When you see it, you circle that number on the clipboard. We are not taking name badges off anymore and putting them on the clipboard for a couple of reasons. First of all, if a child is roaming the hallway and we don't see a parent around, we want to know where he came from and be able to get the child back there and maybe the parent is still there. Also, we are going towards and actually doing that here at East this year. East is, um, it's new downstairs and there are um, locked doors once you get into the children's area. And so you, no one will, can, there's another way in here. And from this way, you cannot get in at all. I think they don't lock the other one. I think they lock this one. No one can get in that way. So everybody that comes in that way has to be wearing a badge, a parent badge. If a parent doesn't have the badge, we're not going to let them in that secure hallway. And eventually when we get to the final phase at West, we'll do that there too. But it isn't that way yet, so we can't do it. So, yeah, well. Grandparents or anything like that? They have to have an, a parent badge. So, so the grandparents, so the maybe four badges? Is there no, no. So the parents loan them out to the grandparents? Yes, yes. We, the parents are responsible for those two name badges. If they want to give it to somebody else, that's totally their call. But you have to see it, not just let them tell it to you. You have to see it and then circle. And that tells us, when we collect all those, if we see a name tag that's circled, that tells us, I saw that parent badge. Don't circle all of them and then just, you know, think you'll see all of them. Yes? For those who are new, would you tell them what that really looks like? Is it code? Oh, yeah. There's, it's just a little white sticker. It's smaller than the name tag the kids wear. And it's got their security code on it, which matches the security code on the name tag that they're wearing. So when they show that, the teacher can circle that code on the name tag. Ann? And if that gets lost, they can come to the registration table and show a picture ID, and we can reprint a parent badge for them. Did everybody hear that? So if a parent says, I lost it, don't don't say, oh, okay. Um, send them back to the Welcome Center. They'll reprint. And 
I'm going to do something this year. Because here's the other thing that happens, and maybe I'll be answering your question. We'll see. Um, if you know the parent, and you know that kid belongs to that parent, and they say, oh, it's out in the car, I dropped it somewhere. You say, oh, we'll either go find it or go get another one. And then if they say, but you know me, you know I'm, I'm this kid's parent. Yeah, well, I, I, I also know that Chris is putting plants out there, and she's gonna find out who's sticking to this rule. So I, I can't, I can't. Blame it all on me. Just say, Chris won't let us do it, and if I get caught, I'm in big trouble, which you will be. Um, did that answer your question, Richard? Okay, go ahead. Sometimes grandparents bring the kids, and they just pick up the phone and check them in, but sometimes they lose it. Their names don't match up with the kids. What are you doing? Then, then, okay, so it, what, what Mike is saying is if, um, if a grandparent brings them, they know the phone number to check the child in, and then they lose that badge, and they go back to the welcome center, their ID may not match the last name. I think what we should do at that point is, um, I don't want you guys to make the decision, I want you to call me in on that. Because I, well, at East, Vicki, Vicki, you're gonna have to make that decision at East. 911. Because, yeah, we have, yeah, yeah, that's true. We could call the parents to find out for sure. Deb? I have a question, but to answer that one, like when the parents fill out an application or whatever, they have to fill out, can't they say, these people also can pick up my... Well, we don't do that anymore. That's not on the form anymore. Because when, like, if you have already all registered your children, a grandparent may come and the kids already got, you know, the form. And um, we just... Because we just go by the security number. We're not going by names or anything. We're only going by that security number. So the kids won't have a name, they'll just have a security number? No, they'll, the kid will have a name. Okay, so then, say dad Okay, my question is, does the kid, do the parents have the same number, and the kids have the same number for the whole year? No. No, it's different every Sunday. Okay. Different number every Sunday, so that's why they have to show that every Sunday. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Good, good questions. Yes, Crystal. So before we could fill in for our kids, our kids are allowed to do these two. And so like my parents go to our church, and so if, if they lost the badge and they went to the counter, would it show their name that I had put it in the system? We don't have that line on the form anymore, do we? No. So it shouldn't be on there. I, I mean, that's why I want to be called in at that point. But I know who, who your parents are. Right. Mm -hmm. They're there enough. <laughs> but we'll, I mean, we just, we're all doing, it's all for safety. It's all about the kids. It's what we're encouraging and what will be once everything is secure. Yeah. It'll be, they'll be wearing it. We're yeah, they need to wear them. They need to wear it. And hopefully they, they stick pretty well. Um, which you probably noticed if you've washed a child's clothing and left that, left that sticker out there. Okay. okay, any other questions or comments? Yeah, Andy. Uh, will there be a communication out to all the parents? Yes. Yes. We'll be sending a mass email next week. We've got a few things on that list of what we want to communicate. So yeah, good question. Yeah, so they know that. Um, I remember when we first started this system and I had a parent come to, I was, I don't know if I was subbing or what, I was in a, a, a room and the mom came to me and I know the mom and I know the mom's kid and she says, I left it out in the car. And I looked at her and I said, well, can you go get it? And she just looked at me and I said, I know. I know you, and I know your kid, but if we're relying on that rather than our system, then there was no point to purchase this expensive system. So we have to make the system work. So I did it. You can do it. You can blame it on me, and we'll keep our kids safe. All right. Um, I am very excited. Uh, now is the time when we're going to learn about our true curriculum, and we have a special guest. Come on up, Byron. I don't know how many of you know Byron Reagans. He is, yeah, go ahead, Clark. <laughs> Byron is from our church. His wife is on staff, and he has been a David C. Cook representative for how many years? Uh, yeah. A hundred? Uh, Thirty. Thirty. And 30. his territory keeps getting bigger and bigger because he used to teach, and now he's got too many churches to cover. And um, But he knows this curriculum 
inside and out, and he's going to share with you some of the philosophy and and history and whatever else. Hey, let's give it up for Chris and the team, huh? You know, um, this, this is, I, I gotta admit, this is kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting, kind of just a little different for me to do that, like with my own homies, you know what I'm saying? My own, my own people. There's so many people in this room that I don't know. I mean, I see Clark Cheney, golly, and Ann, wow, some of us. Mrs. Strawn, wow, some of us have John Dieter. We've just been at it for a long, long time. And there's so many new people and how exciting it is for us as uh, we come together as a leadership team and really begin to look at a new year, uh, a new season, thank you, a new season of ministry. And I do have the privilege of covering the country for David C. Cook. Many of you are, are probably familiar with David C. Cook, and I've had the privilege to, to be at that place for 30 years doing ministry around the country. And I find myself this time of year doing this all the time. And for this kind of turnout tonight, it's epic. Give it up one more time. <laughs> For the leadership team right here, and then you, leadership team, give it up for these guys. Man, incredible. So much stuff going on for you guys to carve out some time to be with us tonight. Uh, to come together as a team, kind of a powwow before you kick off the new year, and then just to kind of, in about 20 minutes, kind of... Um, kind of take you in through the back door and bring you into the conversation about this stuff called true and what it is and and um, why it came about. It's, it's really about a three hour conversation that I now have to do in about 15 minutes, Ralph. So you keep me around on that schedule if you would do that. But about five years ago, I had the privilege to um, pulled together ministry leaders from all over North America out in Orange County. Not bad in October. And as I brought a lot of people together like Bruce and Sterling and specifically Chris, we began to ask questions. And as we asked questions, we began to whiteboard. And as we began to whiteboard, all of this stuff that you're about to use, embark on, was really a dream that we had back in October some five years ago. Uh, Simon Sinek, and some of you probably have read some of his stuff, and maybe you have, uh, one of his books that I have found extremely intriguing right now is Start With The Why. And some of you might be saying tonight, why am I here? Why have the door is locked, you're going nowhere. <laughs> Why have I committed to this year? And we began to kind of look at, at David C. Cook, why are we going to invest several million dollars into a project? And it was a very simple answer. As we listened to practitioners from across North America, it was very apparent to us that something is a miss. Something is wrong with the publishing houses material and all of this material, including a number of resources that David C. Cook has, and many of them are very good, and there's a lot of good published curriculum out there, and our church here has used a number of incredible curriculums over, over many, many years. But as we really started wrestling with the why, it really took us to, uh, and if you brought your Bibles, being good Baptist, you can go to, uh, go to Luke 18.8 with me real quickly. Um, because this, this is, I'm hoping why we're here tonight. Um, this passage, I'm really hoping... Um, this is why you're involved in the ministry here as we're speaking into the lives of children. And I want you to know, um, I am in this with you. So I am not going to come and share philosophy and 
um, kind of the big picture with you and leave and never be a part of the ministry here. I am. I have told Chris I want to be very involved. What's going on? And to coach, to teach, to be alongside of you, as really we're looking at shifting a philosophy, a, a different landscape. True is much more than just a curriculum. It's a philosophy of ministry. But as we began to drill down, this is the passage that really stuck with us. And I hope we'll stick with you tonight. Uh, it's, it's Luke 18, 8. So basically what's going down is the coming of the kingdom is about to happen. And Jesus is talking about it. Um, then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this evil judge. Even, the, even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who plead with him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when I, the Son of Man, return, how many will I find who have faith? So it really begs the question, why do we do this? Why are we here tonight? As Simon Sinek says, start with the why. We're here, I believe, because we want to invest in children and families, to invest in their faith, to help increase the faith, to help them practice their faith, right? That's why we do this. And that's why we embarked on this project at David C. Cook, some five years ago was to really hone in on this thing called faith. I am not that smart. I am not at all brilliant. I'm a pastor's kid. I've been around the church my whole life. I live in the church now as I travel across North America. I work with some of the most incredible churches in the country, none better than my church. I want you to know that. But I do know this, and as we look at this faith thing, that when Jesus comes back, will he look at us and say, wow, kids under construction, you all were about helping kids understand what faith is. You did all that you could do Sunday morning and Wednesday night and all the other times we're involved in ministry and you're involved in ministry. And look at this turnout as you guys are thinking about this new ministry this year. When it's all said and done, can we say, wow, we were about pleading and asking the Holy Spirit of God to awaken a child's faith so they would explore and walk with Jesus the rest of their lives. You know, we've kind of been seduced in our society and certainly in the Fox Valley area. You're, this church is no different than really any church that I work with across America and in Canada. The seduction that we have really fallen into in the church, and, and we, we often fall into it in children's ministry, is it's got to be fun. In fact, on the way here tonight, I'm not going to mention the church, but someone had a bunch of signs out in their yard kind of promoting their church. And one of the words in that sign was fun. And I thought to myself, wow, that's really interesting. I don't know, uh, because you who know me, I am a party waiting to happen. <laughs> but I don't know if one of the words, if you give me three words, I don't think one of the words that I would use to really want to describe my children's ministry that I'm now a part of is fun. There is no one better in Geneva and the state of Illinois in our country than you all doing fun. But this is something I know for sure. Children and students are walking away from the church and walking away from their faith. There's many a reasons for it. But one of the reasons is many of our children, and some of you are here tonight, our students, and maybe we even as adults, 
We know about God, but we really don't know God. Think about that. We, we know a lot about God. What, what do we know about God? Let me hear from you guys. Just say it out loud. What do we know about God? Come on. Love. Love. He's love. What else? Creator. He's a creator. What else? Holy. He's very holy. What else? Omnipotent. Omnipotent. Big word. He's always present. He's here and everywhere all the time, right? What else? Powerful. Powerful. Yeah. Wise. Wise. Sovereign. What was that? Sovereign. Sovereign, yeah. Good Baptist. You've always <laughs> got to go with the sovereign word for sure. Good job, Chrissy. You get a prize later. Anything else? Just. Just. He's the same as he was yesterday. Today. He's the same as he was yesterday, and he'll be awesome tomorrow. Let me ask us, because I am one of the us. What are we doing here this fall to really create space for kids to hear the voice of God and respond? When kids respond, that's when they really begin to flex their muscle and really understand faith and have the ability to really hear the voice of God through you as you teach, coach, shepherd, read passages, yeah, the real why for us is we read Luke 18, 8, when Jesus returns, will he see faith being worked out because of our ministry here at First Baptist Geneva? It will be a number of reasons, but certainly one will be if we create space for kids to really begin to know who God is. Okay, so we're going to do that really two ways. Uh, Chris wanted me very quickly to give you kind of a background, and I've done that very, very quickly. True has been out there for about five years all across North America, now going internationally. There's a number of things that are really, really unique about True, but I want you just to think about two things tonight. Would you turn to your neighbor and just give him the peace sign? All right? Come on, guys. Play along. All right? I want to yield, okay? Number one is, I think you're going to love this thing we call the Big God Story. Uh, when we began dreaming on this, there were a number of things that we were attracted to, and this is probably one of the most unique pieces of truth. The cool thing about true is chronologically we go through scripture. It's three years, we go through, come back, go through again. But the beautiful thing is, unlike many curriculums that we have used here, and you know I'm right on this, you who have been teaching a long time, many curriculums you hop around Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, New Testament, New... You know, and kids are just, I mean... We're all screwed up because we don't know exactly how this Bible thing is really put together, right? So the cool thing about true is chronological. So, so a number of you are really going to really dig that, that is very sequential. It's all really tied closely together. There is some validity about helping kids really understand the books of the Bible. But more importantly, a new angle that we're taking is we really believe when you start in the old and you bring it through the new, we weave in this redemptive thread, this redemptive story that all through this incredible meta-narrative of Scripture, which basically means it's a story of God. This, this, this is a love story book, this Bible thing here, you know, that we all read from all the time. It's what we go to. But when you really peel it back, guys, my team, this is really a love story about God. Every story is about God, Jesus. And what we've done in many curriculums is we've made Paul the hero. We've made Esther the hero. We've made David the hero. We've made Moses, or as I think one of the coffee kids said years ago, Noses. So 
it was a cross between Noah and Moses. We've really made them the hero, but no, they're, they're not the hero. The hero of every story, every weekend, is God. So you're going to really hear God kept his promise. God is a deliverer. God is a merciful God. So we want to applaud and make God champion through the big God story. So then your kids can step back and see as Christ followers, they too are a part of the big God story. It doesn't end, but it continues with us as we keep telling the story of faith, the big God story. I think you're going to like it. Secondly, this is probably the most, um, the most appreciated, valued, spoken about uh, piece of truth. And for some of us, it's going to be a little hard <coughs> with truth, to be honest, because we really believe that the Holy Spirit of God is the teacher. We're a coach, we're a guide, but as we pray and prepare during the week, aren't we just petitioning the Holy Spirit of God to be present and to teach and to use us and our teammates and all the other volunteers? Absolutely. So for some of us, um, it, it's, it's taking our hand off the wheel a little bit and really listening to God as far as what he is saying to us and how we should shepherd and the questions we should ask and always asking, what is God saying to you? How is God speaking to you? In essence, how is your faith growing? Those, those are the questions we ask. Worship as response stations, which we're going to do in just a few minutes. This is, uh, I wish I could have said it was my idea. Again, I'm not that smart. I just simply know that a lot of our kids know about God, but some, very few, really know him. And unless we create space for kids to really meet with God, this next generation will be no different than the one we're currently in. See, there's no one better than us folk from First Baptist Geneva on doing stuff. But John Ortberg, in one of his many awesome books, really talks to us about being with God. When's the last time we were really with God? I mean, really with him. So very intentionally and purposefully, True wants to create space, or what we call worship as response stations. All right. I saw this for the first time five years ago at Rock Harbor Church in Costa Mesa, California, which, by the way, this is where True came from. David C. Cook partnered. We had 25 to 30 field testing churches around North America that field tested this as we rolled it out five years ago. It was a Saturday night. It was a room half this size. Squeezed in this room was about 75 upper elementary kids. Can you feel the pain? Can you feel it right now? And so Matt Barnes gets up and leads these kids in worship. It, it was pretty good worship, but we can do just as well. Then... Uh, Tommy got up and told the big God story. And it wasn't a video. Uh, he wasn't even in costume. He simply, Clark, just got up and he told the big God story because we believe the Bible is enough. We do support you with videos and so on, and I believe in creativity, but the word really <laughs> is enough. So as he told the big God story, I mean, the kids were in it to win it, and when this thing really hit a tipping point for me was when Matt came back and said, before we go into our small groups, after hearing that big God story and being challenged to really submit ourselves to a loving God, there's only one other thing we can do, and that is just respond in worship. 
So what I want us to do, he said, um, we're going to take like the next 15, 20 minutes, and we've got the prayer wall, the giving station, where you give your money, you give yourself to help, to serve someone, the encouragement station, and the journal station. And he's like, for the next 15 minutes, I want you to pray, where should you go? Where should you go and respond to God in what you just heard? Now, if you want to stay where you're at, you can do that and just respond to God. But if you'd like to get up and go and respond and just talk to God and let him talk to you, we want to give you time to do that. So, you know, like we always do in church, we turn the lights down, put on some cool music. And so for the next 15 minutes, it was this quiet. As kids just got up or stayed where they were, they went to the prayer wall, they went to the giving station, they went to the encouragement station, they went to the journal station, and they met with God. If that's not fun, we are in the wrong business. If we want to be all about fun, and I don't think that's our main value, we should just turn them loose and send them to the park district and have fun. We'll balance fun. You guys are awesome at that, as I said earlier. But I believe Luke 18.8, if we're going to do that, this place has to be a place where kids, students, and adults can meet with God, can begin exercising that faith muscle, and we come alongside and help shape this next generation. Fifteen minutes. No discipline issues. The boys were better than the girls. You're like, you're lying. No, I'm not. I'm telling the truth. Now, it's a possibility. To that point, there was some discipline issues. But you know something, as we leaders, coaches, shepherds come alongside the kids and model this, they will watch us and what we're about to do in a few minutes. You're going to see what this worship as a response station is all about. When we model this in front of our kids, they'll get it. And this will be a rhythm of what we do Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, creating space. See, what we often do, we look at our curriculum. Look, I've taught for years. You have as well. Maybe some of you are new. You're going to enjoy this, this new and different approach. Great content, great creativity. But we often want to cover everything. We want to do everything in the book. We want to do the messiest crafts and projects that gets the custodians all hacked off at us. We want to get through all this stuff. And at the end of the day, we go home and we say, well, we got through all this stuff. And then when the Holy Spirit of God begins to say, but did, did your kids really experience me today? Did they really understand more about their faith and grow in a Christ likeness? That's the question we have to answer. So these are two huge features that I think you're really going to dig. The big God story and creating space, creating that worship as a response. You know, one of the beautiful things about our adult worship services is that often we have a chance to respond. And that's what we're doing with truth. And I think what we've often done in children's ministry with curriculums, I've been around this for a long time, is we try to keep it messy, we try to keep it fun, we try to keep it goofy, and we're light on the gospel, because again, Mrs. Strong, you just wanna make sure the kids have a good time and come back next week. I think God has called this leadership team, who I've spent a lot of time with, to something more. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of this whole process with you. Thirdly, um, not only did we find in that why thing that 
children were walking away from their faith and they knew all the facts about God. I mean, they could even tell you like the kind of tar that Noah used on the ark, really, and the kind of gopher wood or wood that it was. I mean, really, at the end of the day, is that really all that important? Isn't something far more important? How are our kids really, really experiencing God and God's Son, Jesus, and living for Him 24-7? The other piece we found was uh, a lot of parents kind of drop off the kids. We do the work, and they do very little. And when you look at Scripture, it's quite the opposite. Parents are supposed to be doing the work, and we're supposed to support. And a number of you were fantastic at that. Jackie and I, we struggled with that. She was better than I. But with true, something that we do, you'll get familiar with this thing called Home Front Weekly and Home Front Monthly. But the Home Front Weekly is a pre-teach for next Sunday. So what we're wanting to do, parents are primary, is one of our values. We're wanting to equip parents to be the spiritual parent that God has called them to be. So a way of doing that is creating something that parents can live with their child during the week and go through this big God story together as a family and experience that. So then when our kids show up on a Sunday morning, they've already been warmed to it. The response to this has been fantastic. So those are some things I don't want to just overdo you with stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there. But I believe God has called you here this season to invest in children. And when you invest in children, you invest in families. I don't think there's anything more important in our church than investing in families. Strong, healthy families Make a strong, healthy church. Make a strong, healthy village. Make a strong, healthy county, state, country. So I'm excited to walk with you, to learn with you, as we begin to look at a different approach, a different style, to do Luke 18.8. I think it's going to be a great year. God bless you. Chris? Are you excited? I am. I, you got a little of that um, preacher blood in you there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to be over here. Everybody's waving me over. Um, we are very excited about the true curriculum. We have spent time with Byron and in, in learning from him and um, just really looking at this curriculum in depth, and we're excited for you to be able to use it. Um, he's, he, I agree so much with these. I love that you mentioned those two points, the Big God Story and the response stations. And we are going to do the response stations right now. And so I want to give you a little direction, but not too much. We have four response stations in the room. There's one over here, one there, one in the back, and one over here. We're going to give you ten minutes, and you can go to one or two or three or four or zero if you just want to sit in your chair and pray. Um, there, the directions are there. It's all self-explanatory. Just read it and do what it says. We ask you to be quiet. This is a reverent time, and this is an example of what the kids will be doing on Sunday morning. When you have finished, just come back to your chair and sit quietly, and then when the 10 minutes is up, I may have to interrupt some of you, um, but we'll, um, we'll continue then. But, um, I'm just going to release you to, to go to the different stations. It doesn't matter what order. There's no order to anything. Um, so just do it. Yeah, Teron? Can I name them? Um, if I can see from here, this is um, Courage to Obey. The one in the back, can you see it, Sarah? I will follow. The one over here, Reflect on You. I don't remember. Commit to God. 
So those are the four stations, and just see what you want to see and experience it. This is your, this is the time that we allow the Holy Spirit to just work in your heart. Um, we have directed these stations toward you as teachers or parents. Um, so you've got ten minutes. Every lesson ends with a blessing. The teachers will bless the children and send them on their way to be a blessing to the people in their lives for the rest of the week. So we're going to do the same thing with you tonight. Um, I want you to uh, take a posture of your hands out in front of you and just lift it up. It's kind of symbolic of your willingness and readiness to respond to God's Spirit and receive what He has in store for you. As you're doing that, I'm going to read a verse from Matthew, Matthew 6, 31 to 33. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Now I want you to clench your hands tightly. Ask God to reveal something you might be worrying about or holding too tightly. It can be ministry-related. It can be personal. But, but uh, sit with them clenched for a moment in God's presence. Then when you're ready, slowly open your palms as a symbol of giving your worries to God as I speak a blessing over you. May you rest in the knowledge that God knows what you need and he will take care of you. May you praise him this week for his goodness in your life. Amen. All right, now we are going to go to our departmental meetings. The places of them are listed at the bottom or maybe on the back of your um, agenda. Preschool and nursery, please stay here for a little while. Nursery will go back there in a minute, but stay right here. Um, everybody in elementary is going to go next door to the chapel. Uh, Masterpiece is going to stay in the back of this room back there. And the Welcome Center, um, people are going to meet in um, the seating area of the restrooms, which is not the stalls. But there's a little seating area out there. So go ahead and, and go on to those, and you'll learn exactly what your morning looks like and the details of what's involved. And when your department is done, you're done. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. I am Nancy Dieter. I'm the Director of Preschool Ministries, and I am so, so thankful for each and every one of you that are here um, as Chris did mention, we have so many individuals that it takes to serve and to make the classrooms happen because we do have a certain policy of number of, of adults that, and, and youth or helpers that are in the classrooms that serve. So I am very, very thankful from the bottom of my heart for each and every one of you. And you have all been prayed over. And when we would do start recruiting every year, we pray specifically for God to place the people in the places where he wants them to be. We don't want to beg and plead and ask people, guilt people into serving and all that, where that's not what we're about. And we do really wholeheartedly just pray that if God's prompting you to be called to serve, that you just follow that prompting. And so each one of you that are sitting here have definitely done that, and I thank you. Let's just open really quickly in a word of prayer. Lord, I just thank you so much for this evening you've given to us. I thank you so much for the gift of the individuals that... Um, have the insight into your word and who you're all about and the inner workings of children and how, how they think and how they feel and how they can learn and I'm just so excited about this year and the things that the children are going to learn about you and the ways that the Holy Spirit is going to begin to work in their lives. Go before us tonight and help us to just cover very quickly the things that we need to know as we walk through this journey together with this new curriculum. We ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, we are going to start just really quickly with, um, I, had, I make up a folder for everyone because there's just so much information that, um, that it takes to really help you to understand how the preschool program works and everything. 
So very quickly, I'm not going, I know you all can read, so we're not going to read through every single part of the folder, but I just want to walk through it to make sure that you do have every component that's in there, and then you can take the time to read that at home at your leisure. Um, first off, you should have a cover letter that looks like this for me, just a welcome letter. Um, secondly, you should have, depending on where you're serving at, you should have a job description that's either for a nursery toddler team mem member or a two through K's team member, which all of you should be two through K. Sarah's got the nursery toddler people. The next thing that you should have is um, the FBCG mission statement, church and mission statement. Just wanted to have that in your hands in front of you so that you just are reminded and can read occasionally to remember what we're all about. If sometimes you lose track and you think, huh, what am I doing here, whatever, maybe I need to pull that out and read about that. Um, so I just wanted to have that in writing for you. Um, one of the next things that I have in here is you will have a information card about whoever your coordinator is that has to do with absences and that type of thing. If you are serving at the East Campus, Vicki no, um, Vicky Jeffrey is your coordinator, so you should have a card that has her name and her information on it. Okay, all righty. If you could let, hey Jill, could you lend me a hand? I've got those cards over in a box over there, and it would be easier if you could just maybe give them the right ones they need. Over in those two white containers, if I've got a stack of the cards somewhere in those piles of all of my information. And raise your hand if you have the wrong one and tell who you need to have. So if you're East Campus doing anything whatsoever, you should have Vicki Jeffrey. We had some wonderful, wonderful late volunteer ladies come to stuff all these folders, and it is like Jill does an awesome job. I tell her what all we need printed out, what needs to go in them, and then they put their their they get their routine together on stuffing them. But it is a very complicated process, and the gals spent like three hours yesterday, so it can be kind of confusing. So that's why I wanted to walk through and make sure we had all the right components. Um, so East Campus should be Vicki Jeffrey. Saturday night should be Jamie Holda. So if there's anybody here that's serving Saturday night, your card should have Jamie Holda's information on it. If you are serving in the West Campus 2's or 3's department, and hopefully you all know where you are serving, that's kind of why I had those sheets over there to help you out, to remind you. Um, you are serving in the 2's and 3's, you should have a card that has Kathy Schamberger's information on it. If you are serving in a 4's, 5's, or K's classroom, then you should have a card that has my information on it because I'm the coordinator of that department. Kathy does the twos and threes and um, are you all good with that? Do I need to do the class names or anything? Are you all good? Okay, so hopefully we have that covered. Okay, the next thing that you should have in your folder is I want you to be fully aware of the information that we send to parents that when parents do register their children for our weekend programming, we send them a mailing that has all the information of what we kind of expect out of them and so that it just makes everything for their family easier, it helps to make the children have a better experience that morning and it just helps to make the servants have a better experience and help everything to run smoothly. So you'll have. This two-page policy talks about sickness, anxiety, when my child's sick, separations, our security procedure, the parent pager information, snacks, emergency. If you could just read that at your leisure and become familiar with that, that would be very helpful. Okay? And if you have any questions at all after reading any of it, you know, you can ask me, email me, call me anytime. Then the next thing you should have in your folder is, um, Jill, this may be another part, I don't know if they have the right ones. This, you should have an information sheet that there are three different types. If you're serving with babies and toddlers, you should have a parent information sheet for babies and toddlers. If you're serving in the twos and threes, you should say twos and threes, which on the back has the bonus of the potty training policy we have here at church that's helpful for those parents and the servants. And then if you're with four size Ks, you should have one that said four size Ks. And this again is another part of the mailing that we send to the parents so that we know the expectations, so they know the expectations um, so that everything runs as smoothly as it possibly can. So um, let's see. 
The next thing I was going to tell you is that in the past, we usually, we will give you what is called a team roster. You got a, a feel over there for what, when you signed up and you saw the sheets over there, those look like kind of what your teams are, and hopefully that was kind of helpful for you to see who you'll be serving with. We will eventually make up a specific team roster for each one of your classrooms that will include the adult information, contact information, and your youth information, and substitute information, so that you have that at your hands to be able to secure a sub, to remind you what weeks you're supposed to be serving on, if you're serving weekly, if you're serving the first, third, and fifth Sunday of the month, or the second and fourth Sunday of the month, just to let you know who's going to be in there with you. So that, so we will get those in your hands as soon as we can. We'll probably email those to you, but it just takes a while to get those compiled till we get fully staffed. We've learned from the past that if we do those too far ahead of time, we're constantly having to update and change them and all that, and then we're just constantly giving them to you over and over and over, and it's just kind of craziness. So we thought we would just hold off a little bit. So if there's any information specifically you need to know, you can just contact me, and I'll let you know what you need to know. Okay, next thing we're gonna move on to is I'm just gonna really quickly cover some classroom basics, just so that you all know. We have tried really hard, this is our big thing this year, is to make everything as identical as we can at the East Campus and the West Campus both, so that the classrooms are similar, the curriculum is all gonna be the same, and that type of thing. Classrooms are broke up a little differently here at the East Campus, um, and that's also gonna be an adventure to see with the new service they've ad added and everything to see how that's gonna change things up and who, how people attend and where they attend. But here at this campus, we're gonna have a nursery, brand new nursery toddler room that will be down with all the rest of the preschool rooms now. Then we'll be combining the twos and the threes together in one room, and then we'll be combining the fours, fives, Ks together in one room. On Saturday night, we have the nursery through twos in childcare. We have the threes through Ks in one classroom. And then um, there's the elementary first through fourth grade in another classroom. At the West Campus, we have a nursery room, a toddler room. We have two classrooms of two-year-olds, younger, older, two of the threes, youngers and olders, two of the fours, youngers, olders, two of the Ks, younger, olders. So just so you know how that's set up and how that all works. Um, what we are asking this year is, in the past we've asked for the servants to be in the classroom 15 minutes prior to when you are gonna be serving, but because of the curriculum we're using this year, we're going to ask you to be in your classrooms 20 minutes early. So just please be mindful and plan around that and be prompt because if you're in your classroom at 20 minutes early, but somebody else isn't and whatever, and you've got a child, you've got to drop off in another classroom, and they're not in there yet, it just causes a major domino effect. And so I'm just asking you to be, please possibly be there 20 minutes early. And part of that is because we also are gonna be, the curriculum that we're using is a very jam-packed curriculum, and it's actually based on a 90-minute-like session, and we only have a 60-minute session. So um, with our half an hour that we have always between like the first service, second service and everything, we really are gonna start some of our activities promptly at 9.05. So instead of 9.15 or wait till 9.20, 9.30 till the kids come rolling in, there are gonna be some things that are gonna start right at 9.05. And we need to do that just so that we are able to get everything in. Sarah, did you have a question? Well, that's why I'm saying as long as everybody's in their rooms 20 minutes early, and, and you gotta have a buddy system. Every classroom has to have at least one adult and one youth in every classroom. So as long as you have one adult and one youth in there, please, whatever you do, do not let parents drop off children unless you have two people in the classroom. And I've even told the youth this, that there are a lot of times, sometimes the youth are more prompt than the adults are. I hate to say, but that's the case sometimes. And you'd be amazed at the parents that are just so willing to say, hey, there's two warm bodies in the room. Hey, I want to check them in and get on going to do my thing. And I've told them, whatever you do, you've just got to be really strong and bold and say, I'm sorry, there's not an adult here. You cannot leave your child in the room until I have an adult here. So there has to be, at minimum, one adult and one, child, one youth in every classroom at all times. Okay? So, so you need to arrive 20 minutes early. When you arrive to your classroom, I just ask that you would hand, hand, use hand sanitizer to sanitize your hands or use soap and water because we want to try to keep the facilities as clean as possible and everything as clean as possible. There will be servant lanyards in your classroom that will have your name on it 
And that purpose, and I want you to make sure and wear those, and the purpose for that is so that parents know that, hey, that person belongs in that classroom. And then especially as your team all gets to know one another, the youth aren't going to know you. You know, they may not know you, you may not know them. So we just want to make sure that the people who are supposed to be in that room are in those rooms. The coordinators do go around and check the rooms and everything, but that's just a help to us. If those are the first two things you automatically do, that would be very helpful. Um, then, and then when you wear it, take those, those will be hanging in your room so you can put those on, but when you leave at the end of your session, make sure and take them off, because otherwise you leave them at home, and then the next week you don't have one, and then we're making you another one, and then another one, and, and like I said, it's just hard to make sure that parents know who you are, and it just kind of helps on us if we don't have to make you like six or seven different name tags through the year. But things do happen, and you forget, you get busy, so that's okay. In each classroom, we have the check-in and check-out clipboards. As Chris was talking about, the children have to check in, and they will bring you a name tag. One goes on them. They come in the room. Do not let a child come in the room without a name tag. They have to absolutely positively have that name tag on before they step in the room. Then the other one goes on the clipboard. For those of you who have taught before, in the twos through Ks now, what will happen is there's going to be, instead of having to go have so many pages to go through, now since we only have to do the one sticker, we'll be able to put eight, eight stickers to a page now. So it'll be a lot easier to find that number when the people are bringing and showing their claim numbers and that type of thing. So as she said, when they come to pick them up, you just say show the number, they have to show it, have it on, whatever, and then you say good to go, you circle it, don't waste the time, it's not your responsibility anymore to take that name tag off the child, you don't have to do anything with it, it's up to the parents and that type of thing, okay? That'll help save a lot of time. I, I know it gets busy, and I've been at the door when that happens, and it's hard to keep up with all that, you know, and everything, and I know especially in elementary it's really hard, because they have so many wanting to go, and you've got bigger kids that are wanting to just take off on their own and that kind of thing. So that's why we're really trying to get on top of that. Um, there are parent pagers in the twos classrooms. We do want parents to definitely, in the two-year-old classrooms, to have a parent pager. No matter how comfortable they feel that their child is, you never know when they're going to have a bump of fall. They all of a sudden realize 10 minutes after mom and dad's left, they were happy-go-lucky at first, and then they decide to have a meltdown, and we can't do anything about it. So in the twos, they for sure get a parent pager. And we'll learn about that as, I'm not gonna take time to walk through the whole process, you'll learn about that as we're in the classrooms. Um, there are parent pagers available for all visitors. We do like for them to have them even up through the Ks. Um, and they can get those, pick those up at the um, children's welcome desk or the registration desk if they ask that. Or if they have a child that they know happens to be kind of high anxiety that day or having a problem with separation, um, we have those available. We do have a separation policy we have posted in the room, um, and I think that's, that's on that one page, so I'm not gonna walk through that either. But we do invite parents that if there is a child that's really having a hard time, they are more than welcome to come in the classroom. And then we just kind of stay a little longer the first time, the next time kind of try to make a little less and a little less and do that type of the thing until the child feels comfortable. Um, let's see. Okay, I can't wear that. Um, in all the classrooms, we try really, really, I try really, really hard to keep the classrooms as organized and neat and tidy as we can. So for those of you who have served, you are familiar with, and those you haven't, everything on the cabinets, because I'm a little kind of anal about stuff like this, but I like everything to have its place. Um, everything on the outside of the cabinet has a label so that you know what goes where, crayons, markers, scissors, and then on the inside of the cabinets, there's labels on specific shelves where things go. And the reason for that is that the rooms are used for so many different things and different sessions that it's just so much easier if everybody puts everything back where it goes, then it's in its place, and we don't have issues with missing supplies. We do have a resource room that if you would get something extra from the resource room, I just ask that if you bring it to the room, you do something special with it or whatever, to please, at the end of your session, take that back to the resource room. There's a return bin, you can just put it in there and we'll get it put it away for you. You don't necessarily, you don't have to put it away. But just don't start throwing and accumulating things in your cabinets because then it just gets very cluttery and hard for everyone to use um, and that type of thing. Um, we have everything in there from crayons, markers, scissors, Play-Doh, cookie cutters, glue sticks, everything you really possibly could need is in there. And the main thing I just wanna tell you is if there's ever anything that runs out 
in your classroom or the markers are all dried up and not working and the crayons are broken and icky. I mean, I don't like broken crayons. In the fall, I like to put nice, new, fresh crayons and nice, new, workable markers in the classrooms. Those glue streaks dry out and everything. Just please let us know. And there's always a clipboard in the resource room that when you run out of something, if you can't find me or Kathy or whatever, you can write on there. And, and we'll get that and make sure you get whatever you're needed in your classroom where you can put a request for that. Um, so the twos, in the twos and threes classroom there, they have a little extra, a few extra things than the normal type things are in the classrooms. Um, but they have like bubbles and diaper changing areas and extra clothing. There's extra clothing really we try to keep in all the classrooms. We just never know when a child might get sick or whatever and that type of thing. Um, so you'll get familiar with that and everything once you're in the classrooms. Um, let's see, what's another thing on here? If you, when, the, when your child does have a wet or soiled diaper, we do ask that there's like those little deodorized bags that you put those in there just so it doesn't like stink up the classroom really, really bad. And I know sometimes they can be really bad and they're like, hey, can you get this out of here? And I'm like, yes. And I'll just take the whole garbage can, get it out, give you a new garbage can liner and everything. And there's always deodorant spray in there too in your disinfectant area of things that you can clean with. Um, let's see. In the classrooms, we also try to set them up with equipment and age-appropriate toys and a CD player and everything, like I said, has, a, has its place. So just please return everything back where it needs to be. And again, if there's broken, missing pieces, I mean, there's nothing fun about trying to put together a puzzle and it's missing five of its pieces. It's very frustrating. Or a toy that you're trying to play with and the leg's broken on it or it's missing half its pieces. So please keep us up on those kind of things because we want to have everything really nicely you know, equipped in the rooms. Um, when it comes to diapering, there's always questions about this. We really prefer that the adults change the diapers. I know there are some teenagers, a perfect, great, whatever, and in need, if you're holding a, a crying baby or a toddler or whatever, and the only available person is a teenager, is one of the you know, youth helpers, and you've seen them and you're very confident in their abilities, you can let them change the diaper. But we really prefer that a female adult does that, and we just kind of prefer that it's a female. But uh, some guys seem to have some guys have to seem to have the idea that guys are not allowed to change the diapers. But yes, guys can change the diapers. The adult men can change diapers. You're all in the room together. It's done out in the open. There's not like anything can happen or go on that everyone in the room is not going to see. So in a pinch, the man can change the diaper if that needs to be done. All right. Just want to let you know. When it comes to the children and their bathrooming. If they do need help and assistance in the bathroom, I do have signs posted on the walls that say that it's preferred that an adult does help the children in the bathroom. But again, sometimes the adults might have, have, have kids on laps and this and that and can't help them. If a child is totally capable of going to the bathroom themselves, then let them go in there, shut the door, you know, do their thing. Um, just remind them to wash their hands, that kind of thing. But if they are needing assistance, we prefer adult, an adult go in there to help them, and it, it might have to be a youth if your hands are full with other things, but the door must be slightly ajar. And the reason for that is just so that everyone in the room can hear what's being said, what's kind of happening, going on in there, just so we don't have any issues. It's all totally for the protection of you and for the children. Um, cleanup. When it comes to the end of a session, if there's going to be another session that will be taking place after yours, like in the morning, there's the 915, the 1045, just please make sure and have the room kind of picked up, tidied up, so the next crew that comes in doesn't come into like a, like a monsoon event through the room, you know? And I am really, really a big advocate for children will, will, will rise to any occasion that you really ask them to help you with. And so don't, don't, you know, be mindful to guide them, give them a job to pick up a certain toy, say, Henry, you go pick up all the cars. Okay, you pick up the blocks. Let's see who can get it done the fastest. You pick up the dominoes, you know, instead of just throwing any everything and all the bins, however, it just, what fun is that for a kid to come in and none of the pieces are in the right places with what they want to play with. So they will rise to the occasion. Just make a game out of it and, and expect them to be responsible and help you to pick up the room. Um, after the second hour session though, and there's not gonna be, and if you're only just a single session like on Saturday night, or like the 10, after the 1045 sessions on Sunday mornings, there's a little bit more to picking up the room. We just ask that you do make sure that everything's cleared off the countertops, and the tables are wiped down, the toys are all put away, the room is orderly, and then also, um, 
pick up, like there's a broom and, and a little dustpan in every room, pick up all the ex excess Cheerios and that kind of thing to keep it organized and clean as we can. And then there also, there's a white spray bottle that has disinfectant cleaner you can spray the tables, countertops, things like that with. And then there's a can of deodorant and disinfectant spray so that when the kids are all gone from the room, what you can do then is um, take that and just give a quick spray over like the whole entire like toy cabinet and the bookshelf and the puzzle rack. And because that just kind of helps to fight the germs down and, that, and then that can just air dry. But please don't do that until the children have all left the Sorry, I'm allowing you to breathe in all those toxic chemicals, but we don't want the children to do that. So if you need to hold your nose or whatever, but if you could just do that, that would be great. Um, and then some of the other things is to um, stack the chairs if you're the last session, because that just helps greatly with the custodians because they have so much to do. And if they're having to use time stacking the chairs, guess what? They're not gonna have as much time to get those rooms really nice and clean. You know, they're gonna have to do a lot quicker and move a lot quicker in their cleaning. So, and spray down those train tables and those Lego tables and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then turn off the lights, you know, when you're all done and ready to go. At the end of the session, the last one, if it's a single session or your last session of 1045 hour, if you would remove then the sign-in sheets that you use just for that day, take those off your clipboard and someone take those back to the resource room. There is a, there will be a bin there that you could put those in for us. That's just very helpful. So we don't have to go in and track all those down um, every Sunday. Okay. Anybody have any questions about all that? I know I threw a lot at you, and I just felt like I needed to kind of run through that because we're not actually able to be at the facilities like we have been in the past because with all the construction and everything going on, we still haven't even been able to get in the classrooms yet. So pray for us, and if any of you know, and even yourselves, if you know of friends or whatever, and you wanna make an afternoon of it or something, or a couple hours in a day, give me a call and say, hey, is there any way I can help? Because Literally until this week, everything that was in every one of the classrooms at the West Campus was sitting all in the hallways because they were getting the floors all waxed and everything. Plus with the finishing of construction, we have not been allowed at all downstairs unless we're taken down later by John Harper with our little hard hats on and all that and everything. And it's just fun and exciting. They repainted all the rooms to give it a fresh new bright color and to blend in with everything else. It's awesome downstairs, totally looks different here downstairs, looks different at the West Campus downstairs with the colors, colors, and it's just all very exciting. So if anybody's got an hour to spare or whatever, anytime, feel free to give me a call because I'm sure I could find something to have you help us with because I'm feeling like we're on the countdown, like how many hours are there in the day and we have how many days to get ready for the seventh. But it will, it's happened for many years and will it'll happen this year. I have great faith. Okay, we're gonna, not, we're gonna go away from all of that stuff now. And we're gonna move on to um, talking about the true curriculum because this is what I wanna really be able to spend a lot, of, a lot of time on it. And here we, it's like almost 8.30. Yes, oh my goodness. I haven't even started talking about curriculum. Okay, the true curriculum, like I said, is um, based on a 90 minute session. So I am having to go through and kind of edit the lessons and cut them down a little bit and everything to kind of make them work for our sessions. So long story short, these are the things I want to tell you about the curriculum. True Blessings is, um, the, it's called True Blessings, is a one-year cycle, and that part of the curriculum is going to be used for the East twos and threes and the West um, two-year-olds, okay, because it's a lot more simple. So if you're teaching in that group, I do have, I did put a scope and sequence in there just so you could see the weeks that we'll be doing um, for the first quarter. And then I also put in, oh, I did put those in there and I made more copies of them, I did. Um, I put in the take home weekly little sheet thing that she was talking to, the home front weekly sheet. And I put a lesson in there. We're gonna, we're gonna real quick walk through these lessons um, together in just a moment. The true wonder is a three year cycle. And so I made the decision to take the fours, fives, and Ks program of that and I'm gonna use that for the East fours, fives, Ks, and the Saturday night threes through Ks, but then on Sunday mornings at the East campus, I'm going to use that, but I'm gonna kinda of like abbreviate it a little bit for the threes and make it a little simpler, because true blessings really is for the twos and threes, but I feel like with it being a three-year cycle, it's to the children's benefit if we start them with it at the three-year level, so they have it the three years, the fours, fives, and then the Ks year made more sense to me. 
So we're going to see how that works. This is an adventure all together. Nothing is perfect. And I want you guys' input all the way through this whole process. Uh, you know, as you watch it work, if you have ideas, if I've given you too much, if I need to cut back or whatever, please let me know. Because I'm having to kind of go through the lessons because there's so much in them. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be editing them for you and so that it'll fit into our 60 minute period that we have each day. Also in your folder, you should have a schedule I had to make up schedules for all the classrooms. These may change a little bit, but definitely at the West Campus, I had to make these specifically because we have music teachers that come in at a special time, and Vicki may have to change hers up here at the East Campus as she gets a music person too. So actually, the respond part, for the most part, is usually the music time, and so the activities they have for that is um, during the respond time. So I had to set up that so that my music people would have a rotational schedule to follow. Um, let's see. I talked about the scope and sequence real quick. If, um, if you're a True Blessings person, like I said, the scope and sequence of the True Blessing, it's just a one-year cycle. It's a, it's a done deal is what they say so far. They've written it. They're done with it. They're not going to be editing it, changing it. And what they do, too, in theirs is they repeat the same lesson like two weeks in a row. I'm not for sure how I'm going to feel about that until I get into it more. But I will tell you, for the first week, we are going to start with the creation story. But then, because their actual 1.1 lesson started like the last Sunday, it starts like this upcoming Sunday, and we don't start until the first Sunday in September, we're already behind a lesson. So to catch up, I'm going to combine lesson two and lesson three. So, but I will keep you up on all of that. Um, what's going to happen is the way this works is I'm not given books anymore. I won't be giving you a teacher guide that you'll have for like a quarter at a time. It's all totally 100% online. So we have accounts, um, us leadership, the staff have accounts where we go in and we go to the lessons and then we find the one we want. They have them customizable so I can make my changes, do this and that, and my edits and everything. Um, and all that fun stuff. And so what will happen is I will each Tuesday, I promise, send whoever is going to be teaching that following Sunday the, le the entire lesson to you via email. So you can let me know if it's going to be a problem sending it to you via email and we'll have to work out something else. I can send it snail mail or whatever. But just I want you to have that just so you can read it, know what's coming up, know what the components are, like little activities we're going to be doing and things like that. And then um, when you get there on Sunday, I will have two copies of the actual lesson in the room for you to have a hard copy. So you will have that on hand. And then every single solitary thing as you read through your lessons that you are going to need is going to be provided for you. I have a resource team is one of the things that we've asked for volunteers for, people that love doing that kind of stuff. So they're going to prepare like any props that you need for your story time. They're going to prepare any of the things that you need for the other components during the lessons. So as you look at your lesson, if you just pull it out, I'm going to look real quickly at like the true, I'm just going to pull out the true wonder, um, like the four spice case lesson. So, but you can pull out whatever yours is. And I just mainly want you to see that each of them always start with like what the lesson is, or remember verse, the true mission statements on the front page and that kind of thing. Then it has like a page that's inspire, equip, support. That's for you to read. It's kind of inspirational, devotional kind of thing to welcome you into what the lesson is going to be about, to get you to start thinking, praying about what the lesson's going to be. And then the next page is going to always have like a list of what the supplies are that are going to be for you in the room, that I'm going to have all those things in the room for you every Sunday is my goal for you to work with. Um, threes through Ks, that I have this, I brought this, is a little, it's called a treasure trunk. And in the treasure trunk in the threes through Ks, and I'll have a special little container for the blessings, but the threes through Ks in this treasure trunk every week is going to be a Bible, because I want you to definitely use the Bible as you're doing the lesson, it'll refer to that. It'll have a prayer and praise book for when you have that time during your morning. And it will have a little bag that has I wonder questions in it for the morning. So that's part of the component that will be during the Big God story. So if you briefly look through that, when you first come in, there's different components to the lesson, which are basically like connect 
And if you look at your Connect and even in the blessings, it's kind of the same type of thing. Children will develop relationships with their leaders and one another, building the faith community using simple supplies and conversation starters. These are going to be little activity things that these are the things that are going to start happening at like 9.05, the minute they walk in the door. Some kids may want to do it, some may not. Some may want to play, some may not, but it's something I want out there and I want it offered. It may not have a single solitary thing to do with the lesson, but it's a connecting time for you to connect with the kids and just start and carry on conversation with them and ask questions and that type of thing. Then you'll move into your gather session, um, which um, is the whole part of your story time and all of that. You have a time for your remember verse and they have activities that they have there for that. And then they tell you exactly what to say. They have motions with it. They might have a game that goes with it. And then they then you move into your big God story. And the, with the story time, I've scripted out and wrote everything basically so that if you don't feel like, like I can't tell a story or whatever, and we're not gonna have those story pictures to rely on anymore. We're not gonna have those little God story Bible books anymore to rely on. And they also are going to use different teaching techniques every week so that all the different ways that the kids learn, those are all going to be touched on so that it's not the same thing, redundant thing every week after week to do the flannel figures and that kind of thing over and over and over. So it's going to be new and fresh every week. And so there will be props in your treasure trunk for the threes and up and the twos. I'll put some little things in there for you to have that they need. Um, I'm really excited about this whole thing, and during the gather time, when we did the prayer of release time, we're going to do that with the kids before the big story time. We're going to sit there for a moment, have them put their hands up, out, and up like that, and just you as a teacher will just say a little prayer of release, even if, even, if, even if it's just as simple as God, just speak to us as we listen to your story today, your word today, and let us hear about you today. Um, <coughs> After you finish up the story and everything, this is something I'm really excited about, is there's the goal, the big God story. You keep hearing about that. There's a timeline that I had made up, these big timelines for the threes through the case classrooms that are going to take up the whole size of like the, what the bulletin boards are on there. And each story, there's a little story square, like a figure, like the first one's going to be got a creation story, so it's going to have a picture for the creation story. And so after you're done with the story, you're going to be able to put that picture up there. I'll provide that so you have that up there. Those are going to stay up there. And so this timeline really covers like the three-year period. So the kids are going to physically see how all of these different people and things and how God had things happen in his, God, in his story, the Bible. And it will be a good way for them to reflect and you can go back each week and, and, and go over it and remember it. And the thing that I'm excited about is to think that, hey, when they get in the first grade, well, hey, they're already going to know a lot of, you know, the things about the Bible. And um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, in the threes and fours, five, um, fours, fives case, there's an engage part. We do not have that part, I don't think, in the um, blessings part. The, the blessings is just a few less components than the other parts. But there's connect, there's the, the God story time. Um, and they're all, kind, they're all called, called different things for each one of the different age groups, too. Um, then there's the respond time. Our respond times are going to look a little differently. I know the ones we did like tonight were on an adult level, and they will do a lot of those in the elementary time and everything. Um, but our respond time will be a little bit different. Ours will have a lot to do with um, movement, and that, like I said, a lot of that, as I've noticed, has to do with the music time and that type of thing and tying that in there with that. Um, so that's what that time will be. And then the other time that I'm really excited about is towards the end then, when you're wrapping up and the parents are coming, is the blessing time. And they'll have a time of blessing the kids. And I'm very excited about that time too, that you will actually send them out um, with a blessing for the week. And it might be all of them standing in a circle and you just pray the blessing, you hold hands and do that. It might be you walking to each child and touching them on the head and saying the exact same thing to them. But they will guide you through that blessing time and what you need to say. Um, and then they for sure will have a remember verse too for each week. So when they go home that day, they might have a little bit of an activity that they did that we would call crafts in the past that would tie in to kind of help them to remember what they learned and everything that day. There may be times they might not have an activity like that. 
There might be a game that you do instead or some other kind of an activity and not always a craft. So it's gonna change up all the time in a lot of different ways. Um, but you will send them home with a remember verse and then you will send them home with the home front weekly. Did I put those in each one of your folders and forget about that or not? Um, if I didn't, the ones for the threes through the Ks looks like this. They're the purple and green. So you can get those um, before you leave if I didn't put one of those in your folder. And as um, Byron said before, it is always for like the next week. So when you send them home, they're not going home with a page anymore that reviews about what they did this week. It's a page that's going to be about next week so that you can start working with them at home and start reading the Bible story and the verses that they have and converse with them about all of the wonderful things they have on here so that they're ready to, and excited to come and hear what's God got for me about his big story this week? What am I going to learn and how he's going to work in my life? So did I put those in your folders or not? Okay, so these are for the three suitcases. And then um, the purple and green. And these, then when we dismiss, are the blue and the green ones. And I noticed when I was looking closer at these, they have hedgehog. There's a couple of things I've kind of changed up to. They have like a gizmo, the puppet guy, for the four spice Ks. And I just really kind of see that getting kind of old. And plus, I'm not a real fond of everybody passing the same puppet and sharing it. But you can give me your input on that. But that's why I'm kind of editing the lessons, because it focuses on some of that stuff. And with the blessings, it has to do with this little hedgehog guy, too. So you'll notice I might have to revamp these a little bit because they're going to think, well, we never talked about the hedgehog today or whatever. So I might have to kind of change that up a little bit, too. So come up and get those. And then the other thing that you can get, too, is um, there's this Homefront Monthly magazine that we're making available for one per family. Um, is something that's got all kinds of family activities that you can do with the kids to build your spiritual lives together and your faith. And, um, and so they're very, very cool. And you will have the opportunity then too that um, down the road, we'll give you information on how you can download these online. There's even an app on the phone. You can pull it up on your phone and that kind of thing because it is kind of costly to do a subscription for hundreds and hundreds of people. But we did buy quite a quantity of the first one just so everybody could see what it looked like. So you're welcome one for fam per family to take a home front weekly with you. If you're threes through Ks, take the home front page. And if you're blessings, sure, if you want to start passing those around, you can take those. Um, I did that really, really quickly. And there's just, there's so much more to this, you know, the whole thing. And there's a lot of components. And um, I just want us to all work together. I'm really excited about it. It's going to have a whole new look to it. And the one thing that we really want to think about is we're also kind of start planting in your kids' minds the idea of like, what do you usually say when you're coming to Sunday school on Sunday morning? Like, hey kids, let's go play with your friends and have lots of fun and see what we're going to learn today about Jesus or whatever, or what we're going to learn about the Bible. Now I want you to kind of just try to start thinking about having different conversations and saying, hey, today's Sunday. I'm so excited to go to church today to hear what God has for me to learn today. And, and, um, and my, what my friends are learning, aren't you? And try to have those kind of conversations with them. So I've wrapped that up really quickly in a fast nutshell. We're already five minutes late. Does anybody have any questions at all? Yes. Uh-huh. We actually learned yesterday that we can get in, like the West Campus for sure um, is where I need the most help. We do need help here, but Nancy Taylor uses some of the same rooms for hand in hand. So she's kind of working with her teachers to get stuff in to those rooms. But if you'd be willing to help with the West Campus, just give me a call or an email and I'll say, hey, come on over, I'll use your hands. The one thing I did forget to tell you is if you're serving weekly, we do start on the weekend of September 6th and 7th. So you will start on that weekend. If you're on Sunday servants on the 7th, Saturday night servants the 6th. Um, if you're a two work person that serves um, weekly or 135, that's your time to start. If you are a second and fourth Sunday servant, you will start on September 14th. But we will definitely be sending emails to you and letting you know anything you need to know before we start up. So I just ask you to pray for all of us as we still do have tons of things to do to make the first thing happen. But I do want to say when you go in the room that day, the first day, 
it's nothing's going to be picture perfect for a while. I'm giving you all this, and if you even get a couple of the components or whatever in, because the first day, first second, you know, first week, second week, even through the first month can be kind of hairy. Just hang in there with it, and I do definitely want to hear your, in, your your feedback and input and see, hey, we need to change this. This isn't working or whatever, and that type of thing. So, all right, all right. Thank you very much. And I commission you to go, and we'll look forward to seeing you the first Sunday that you're serving. Thank you, thank you. And take your home front monthlies. Wait, can we have, they're over there. No, he's got it. Oh, he's got it. Sorry. <laughs>